Welcome back, everyone. Our corrupt Democrat state media has been very busy demonizing their political opposition in the Republican Party for decades now. But in the last few years, it's really ramped up to country destroying levels. We've gone from tame labels such as racist to white supremacists, cultists, domestic terror threats, and now they're just straight up calling their political oppositions enemies of the state. Make no mistake, they're not just talking about elected representatives who are a check on their extreme leftist dictatorial agenda. They're talking about you. People need to wake up and realize just how dangerous this situation is. If half the country literally thinks the other half are a horde of attacking domestic terrorists, they'll give the government all the power they need to deal with you just like they dealt with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Because make no mistake, that's what they're being told you are by the people in power. I'm going to show you a quick compilation here proving to you that our media is really enemy of the people. But first, take just a moment to hear about this special offer for my viewers. Studies show that the adult body produces 10% less collagen every decade. If you're over 40, that should terrify you. Collagen is the glue that holds our bodies together. If you're seeing more defined wrinkles or feeling lethargic, realize it has nothing to do with your diet, sleep schedule, workout routine, or whether you smoke or drink. It has all to do with your body's natural collagen production. This is why I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. I've noticed that I look younger, have fewer wrinkles, and have more energy since taking my multi-collagen. My skin specifically looks and feels so much firmer. I didn't have to get on a new diet, sleep more, or start exercising for it to work. Anyone over 40 should be taking advantage of this new opportunity in anti-aging technology. Learn more by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com. Furthermore, you'll get 51% off your first bottle if you order today, plus a 60-day money-back guarantee. I mean, if Donald Trump decided tomorrow to wage a campaign to make hang Mike Pence a litmus test for the Republican Party, the vast majority of Republican office holders would get behind hanging Mike Pence. We've seen the rise of white nationalism. Nationalism is not good. And also this whole idea, I, I keep thinking back on the uh, Capitol riots, mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of, um, you know, U.S. flags. Right. So now when I see the flag and the flag raises, man, where, what, what, what? America am I living in? And for a party, the Republican Party, that makes pornography of patriotism and practically fellates the founding fathers when you'd rather rape democracy than come up with your own ideas. But, uh, and they're done. They're done with ideas. The right to bear arms was designed to protect slavery, right? I've never worked on a campaign in my life other than campaigning against Trump. I'm a national security guy. I've worked in national security against ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Russia. And the number one national security threat I've ever seen in my life to this country's democracy is the party that I'm in, the Republican Party. It is the number one national security threat to the United States of America. When Trump began his run for office, he inspired an uptick in um, white nationalism and in violent white nationalism. I think it's much worse than it was on January 6th. It's much worse than it was in November. It's much worse after January 6th. Though there was less loss of life on January 6th, January 6th was worse than 9-11. I think we're at a much worse place than we've been. And as I've said, I think to you before, I think we're in the most perilous point in time since 1861 in the advent of the Civil War. I do too, I do too. That's what we did this week. We watched every episode of Sean Hannity's show and we color coded it. As you can see, we focused on his language, the insults and phrases that he repeats every night. Nasty little words. You're getting into details and you're talking about a nuanced, powerful argument. Yeah. But lots of people don't get into the argument. They just go, oh my gosh, socialist, I can't have that. It's going to take all my money. I a persistent threat of domestic extremism, domestic uh, terrorism carried out in the ideology and around this belief that the election um, was fraudulent, that the COVID restrictions are unnecessary. All of those ideologies pushed by Donald Trump. But we had a policy, and it was very controversial. It was carried out under the Bush years and under the Obama years of attacking terrorism at its root, of going after and killing, um, and in the case of Amr al awlaki an American, a Yemeni American, with a drone strike for the crime of inciting violence, inciting terrorism. I think the security questions of the Republican Party as a domestic terror threat that were raised by the police officers whose political affiliation is unknown should be front and center for the Democrats in these midterm elections. A New York Times propagandist named Katie Brenner 
and how she tweeted out a call for the government to get this, begin labeling Trump supporters, quote, enemies of the state. This Twitter user, DJ Calligraphy, discovered that she used to be a freelance reporter for a straight up CC propaganda publication. If you don't respect Madisonian checks and balances, if your guy doesn't win, if that's the new rules of engagement for this great republic, then just leave our country. He is America's, our own American war criminal. Not reporters comparing Trump to Hitler, but rather the head of the American military comparing him and his movement to brown shirts, to the Reichstag fire. This is a huge wake-up call to this country when General Milley, the head of the American military, has said this. And it, the, the notion that capitalism is essentially racist and racism is essentially capitalist. That the only remedy for past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy for present discrimination is future discrimination. That some individuals, by virtue of his or her race, are inherently oppressive uh, or privileged, while others are victimized or oppressed, uh, that individuals can bear some kind of collective responsibility or collective guilt for the actions committed by members of his or her race. Do you, do you agree that capitalism is essentially racist? Sir, I'm, I'm, with all due respect, I'm not going to engage without understanding the context of, of statements like that. <laughs>